up, guys? Welcome to the Weekend Zone. I'm Britt Johnson. I'm here with Chris Clark. I'm back. So you literally left last week because mm -hmm. Ty said she kicked you out, and yep. this week you picked kick Ty out. out. Yep. Okay. And I, I wish I, this was I a Laker okay. jersey to add injury to Ansel, but it's not. It's a Bel Air Academy Will Smith Will jersey. Smith. My fresh Prince of Bel Air people. <laughs> I like it. Yeah, I like thanks, it. Thanks. So um, today we have a lot to talk about, so we're just going to get right into this. Do it. We are starting with the Giants because it looks like they are clearing house. They just got uh, rid of Eli Apple, who went go? to your team we'll in exchange for a few draft picks. Yeah. And Fortune people Fortune. were, you know, assuming this is the start of them kind of clearing house. The trade deadline is on October 30th of this month. What do you think is going to happen next with the team? Uh, you know, as much as Giants fans hope that the next thing is an Eli or some kind of move for some kind of quarterback. I, I don't think that's what that, what's going to happen. I think right now they're unloading some of these older guys that have not really done it much, like Snacks. Uh, yeah, I, Snacks left too. Yeah, yeah. And, and, but at the same time, I still feel like that was a stupid move because I feel like he's just on, he's was just finding his own. He's what, yeah. is he 30? Was he even 30? No, I think he's like 28. He's like right, that's what, I don't know. I, that trade to me was a little bit suspect. The the Eli Apple trade, I'm cool with. We gave him a fourth and a seventh. I don't know, I feel like they're they're making moves to change things up in the, on the defensive side because they're so sold that Eli is not the problem. And I strongly disagree with that. But um, I don't think they're gonna make any moves to bring in like a quarterback, or anything, which is what they should Yeah, do. I clearly, think that they should get rid of Eli. Obviously he has a no trade clause yeah. in his, you know, contract, but next year is his final season. Oh, yeah. He had his contract was four years, $84 million. He was guaranteed $67 million. So next year he'll be owed $22 million, but most of that is not part of the guaranteed money because when he signed, he got 54 million of the guaranteed. And so I just think, just cut him. You need to cut that man. You know what I mean? Because that's gonna like. It's not gonna hurt him. Fine. I mean, it will, not, but. I mean, they'll probably have to pay him at that point only a couple million yeah, dollars. Exactly, they're they're exactly. not gonna have to pay him the 22 million that they would. Um, I think the next couple years are just gonna be rebuilding years yeah. for them. Obviously, it's, you did you did a good job by drafting Saquon or whatever. Mm -hmm. Next year, draft and draft a, a quarterback. Like we have that guy from freaking Oregon. That's mm -hmm. good. Like there's a couple guys that are gonna come out that I think are oh, relatively man. good or whatever. And so I say you draft a quarterback. Because you have Saquon and because he's already been there for a year, the quarterback doesn't have as much pressure on him to throw the ball. They can run it a lot next year and yeah. just kind of, you know, just know that they're not going to be that great next season and they don't the have Odell, a good... The Odell thing. They just locked him in for forever. I, I know, but give it a year or two. They could Dak Prescott the whole situation. Technically, they could get a guy in like one of the earlier rounds, but I mean, Dak was a fourth round pick yeah. and he ended up being amazing that season, you know? You never know what like quarterback's gonna come out. I never mean, Tom know. Brady was a six round pick. A lot of these Tom, top guys. I mean, man. Tony Romo was Russell undrafted, Wilson. you know? So yeah. you literally don't know how great a quarterback's gonna be 100%. until they're in that situation. You have more to gain by just cutting Eli and then just starting off fresh. Now, Instead of waiting another more. year yeah. and having to then after next, cause after next year, they're not going to keep him on, you know what there's I mean? There's no so. way. I, 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 there's no way. There's no way they're going to repeat and like re-sign him after. I, yeah, there's no right. way. I would be. I think that'd be crazy. Right. Yeah. So I think they just might as well just start off now. now and do it now. That's because at take. that I like point, it. I like at that it. point they might. I mean, you signed Odell, whatever, and then if you keep, you know, Eli for a little bit longer, then you're just pushing back why you paid Odell so much yeah. money, you know? Because they have so many weapons on offense. Like, it, 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 for them to openly say that they don't believe Eli is the problem is just insane to me. They have numbers of receivers. They have a great tight end who's is injured, but their backup is, even, is, is good as well. Right. They have Saquon, so it's just like, I think that's a good idea. I, I I didn't even think of the numbers and stuff like that. That makes sense to me. I would do it. Cut your losses. You know. There you go. Hey, I'll, I'll give you that. I'll give you that. I'll give you that credit. Go ahead. You can hire me, people. Hire that. me. <laughs> uh, let's move on to NBA. I want to talk about the suspensions though, really quick. Let's like, do, do you think everybody deserved the suspension that they got? Do you think Rondo actually spit on Chris Paul? What is your verdict here? Because there's I'm, so many, you know, opinions. Everywhere. And, yeah. yeah. I'm one of the crazies. I don't think Rondo purposely spit on him. I do think the spit came from Rondo, therefore I um, understand Chris Paul getting rage and trying to poke his eye out of his face. But when you look at it, it didn't look like a, a projected spit. It looked because like- Because he, I, he, okay, so he tried to say his spit came because he had a mouthpiece in, mm -hmm. but I feel like the spit did not get projected because of his mouthpiece. 
because he wasn't saying anything at that second. So why would it just be? It was like a, like one of those. He's like, yeah, like a. But like, you know. I feel like it didn't get projected because of his mouthpiece. But I, I do feel like he tried to like. So you think he purposely tried to spit? Yeah. That's. I, I mean, either way. And that I is the word. I would rather somebody punch me in the face than spit oh, on me. Oh, 100%. Oh, 100%. Spitting is the most disrespectful thing. So I honestly don't even think Chris Paul should have been suspended If I'm Chris Paul, I'm pissed at LeBron. Like, don't hold me back. Like, let me take out your point guard because you don't, you don't <laughs> spit on me for that. Like, I'd be, yeah, I'd be, F the best friends, F the gods and stuff. Like, I, no, get off me, LeBron. I'm, I'm beating up your point guard. Right. Yeah, uh, that's my thing. That's why I, I'm not sure if he did it purposely, but at the same time, I understand CP's point of view. I, yeah. I don't think he should. I think the two games are fair for him. I think it should have been more for B.I. even though... Well, he only got one, right? B.I. got four. Brandon Ingram got four games. He got the really? most of all of them. Oh, yeah. it was 4-3-2. Okay, yes, yeah, yes, 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 yes. But my thing is, like, the initial thing cooled down, but when he goes back in and blindly and that long punches... Giant yeah, arm. man, that Mortal Kombat <laughs> reach that he had. I don't know. To me, that that that's something... I, I was hearing somebody compare it to uh, back in the day, I don't know, when the Rockets, when uh, Rudy Tomganovich got knocked and broke his skull because of something like that, where just like a plain hit where he wasn't yeah. defenseless. It was a very similar situation. Thank God nothing like that happened. Right. But I feel like just because of the danger of the situation, not intent, you know, he was already upset. I think he should have missed a little bit And more what game. do you think about, because um, Rondo came out and said that Chris Paul was a terrible teammate anyway, even though that. it was a little weird because it's like you, you can't really say that them. you never played together. Yeah, yeah. But then um, Big Baby came out and like said you. he played with Chris yeah. Paul and he played with Rondo yeah. and he said yes, Chris Paul is a bad a teammate. So what do you think about that whole thing? I think it's a I, not a, I, I think there's some truth to it because also your guys back when the Clippers and the you know right City, and then he went to the Rockets Blake, and he went through but the, I, yeah that yeah. too. But I'm talking about the and fact he, that Blake and DeAndre DJ alluded and Chris to hated it. Him. Yeah, they alluded yeah. to it. They, like they didn't come out and say it, but they alluded to the fact that he wasn't easy to play with. So that's why I feel like there's truth to it, but I don't feel yeah. like that's a great argument. I think that he is just really passionate and wanted the wants the best for like his team. Like he's Jimmy like Butler. the Jimmy Butler, yeah. right? Like the whole Jimmy Butler situation mm -hmm. happening right now. Chris Paul situation was like that, but I think Chris Paul like masks that a little bit yeah. better, and he wasn't out talking in public about like, oh, my teammates doing this, whatever. And that was more locker room stuff. So I don't really feel like you're as bad of a teammate if you're not bringing yeah, out. Well, he doesn't do this, and he does. He yeah. wasn't ever publicly pointing fingers in the locker room. He was probably being like a coach when maybe he felt like people weren't stepping up to coach. You know, I mean, no, nothing yeah. against Doc Rivers, but maybe he felt like Doc wasn't saying stuff to people like he should have, and he felt like he had and to step in. You never like, know. You know? I, I, then I, that's the problem, like you know, because the people guys. hated Michael. Michael mm, Jordan yes. punched people in the face mm. and like got into it. Was to, like every leader has. There's a point where pe the people they're playing with hate him. Kobe Bryant, same thing, Get you know. Same thing all so the time, man. cuss them out in practices, yeah, hundred percent. You still you gotta do spit in people's face. Yeah, things. man, it you don't do matter. that. Especially you were never a teammate of this man. Yeah, you ain't gotta stick up for other people. Mind, oh. you, mind your business. Mind your business. Just That's all. Just business. mind your business. <laughs> All right, let's move on to Lonzo Ball, who says the NBA didn't mind their business because they just stole the JBA's idea. Um, because now they're going to be letting players go to the G League who yeah. don't play college. And what, what is what is the min minimum they're getting in the G League? In the the minimum they're getting in the G League is one hundred and twenty five thousand dollars to play in the G League. <sighs> Sign me up. And I can't. That's that's that, that's insane. Like I get Lonzo's sentiment, you know, because they 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 started it. They introduced the idea and. But at the same time, you're going to be getting the actual talent that are going to G League because they have a better well, chance to go Well, number one, not only do, is there are they paying them $125,000, but um, they get the they're they're paying them too yeah, man. because the JBA's <laughs> issue, especially like not only were they just getting $2,000 mm -hmm. a month, but a lot of the guys complained that they weren't getting their checks or weren't getting them on time or whatever. So the fact that it's like a, like to play like for a G League team, like you know the NBA is going to pay, like they have the money have the to money. pay. Um, but I wonder if this, I wonder how they got around this with the NCAA. Like what, the NCAA has NCAA to be involved mad. in some way. Oh, There's yeah. something, because the whole thing with the JBA was the NCAA kind of 
squashed a lot of stuff that they were able to do, mm -hmm. and they couldn't recruit certain people because the NCAA is like, no, if it's G a top League recruit. Too, the ASA G League, they can't either. They can't recruit got like they have to choose the yeah. G League. They yeah. can't go after you right. like the NCAA can. Yeah. Um, so the, that is one of them. Other than that, yeah, there has to be other things. I'm not 100% sure what they were, but that was one of the bigger ones where you can come to us, you can play for us if that's what you choose to do, but we can't go after you. Of course these players are going to choose I, I, especially I, I, with the whole, like, I mean, it's one and done anyway that yeah. a lot of guys do. Like, I'm not going to just go to college for one year when I could just make $125,000 yeah, that year. Like, and that's the minimum. Some of these guys are going to end more, up making yo. three, three four hundred thousand yeah. dollars playing in the G League. I don't, I don't know how NBA has this much money. It's insane to me. And it's just it's gonna keep going to yo, because people are going to be watching these games now, especially if some of these pop talents start going to the G League right. instead of the. G my, in a couple be important years, again. my March Madness is not going to be what it <coughs> no, is, and that's not. my favorite thing in the world. It's I not. love more than. Don't, don't um, get mad at me on this. More than oh, no. the NBA Finals, I, I love March Madness. All right, next March subject. Madness playoffs are way better than NBA playoffs. Because you see so many teams that that I, like weren't supposed to. The that Cinderella get there part, and, like, I yes, oh, I, I love, just love that it. part. And then of it's it like too. a one and done game. It's yeah. like if you don't win this game, you are out. The NBA kind of needs to go back to five game series in the beginning and maybe have the finals be I seven games. But that. like, I'm so sick of the the NBA finals or the NBA playoffs start in like May and end in July. That's too long. But you're only saying that because of the Warriors, the Warriors era that we're in right now. So it's just be, it's not fun to watch. It's but it's not, but it's also too long. I don't want to watch the NBA playoffs for two and a half months. Although it's good for the channel. <laughs> it keeps us a little busy over the summer months when whatever, but like it's just so long and like. It, I love the NBA. Even though the Knicks March are never Madness. in the playoffs. So. Hashtag March Madness in the comments below. So let's move to my favorite part of the show, honorable mentions. What you got for us today? Uh, my, my just simple one is a cute, cute little little moment between our family. Uh, you guys Aww. know earlier this week, uh, Seth dropped uh, a, a 50, well, how, how, I, I, 51. 51 points. God, he did it in three quarters, but that's neither here nor there. But uh, prior to that game, he had a cute little moment with his mother, a uh, little volleyball uh, assist by Mama Curry right here. I'm just glad he made the shot. Like to me, that I, at first I'm like, okay, cool, dude. But when he made the shot, I'm like, all right, that was pretty cute. Yeah. Like he made the shot. Maybe his moment. mom like touching the ball and doing the energy. That's that what made him have magic. such a good game. He should do that before every game. I that he should look into it 100. percent So mine is actually going to come from it's Halloween season. It Halloween is. time. Halloween's in a couple days, mm -hmm. and the Trailblazers decided to oh, dress yeah. up for Halloween. Yeah. Check out this video. There's the beast. Yeah, you see Jason, you see the beast. Who's next? Steve Austin. It's wrestling night in Portland. Chairs will fly. Card tables will be crushed as the Blazers take on the Washington Wizards. So Dame doing the stone cold Steve the Austin walk. walk. The walk. The walk. Was He's so the goat. Perfect. Did you see? When um, he was walking up at first, I was like, "Who is that?" Like man, I didn't even know what player it was. Dame had the, the walk, walk on lock. Down. But my favorite was uh, Mo Harkless, who was doing the um, the Tyrone big one. No ah! one talked about that. The, the Tyrone, that was, I thought yeah, that, that was, that was, was a good. One. And then the good Beast. Move. Yes. That was a good, he had the whole actual. They went all out, game. man. They went, yeah. shout out to the Blazers. Win some games, yeah. but that was, that was a fun moment. That was a fun moment. <laughs> <laughs> They'll win some um, costume content. They get some points there, but yeah. yeah. All right, that is going to do it for the Weekend Zone. I'm Britt Johnson. I'm with Chris Clark, and we'll see you guys next week. Everyone have a happy and safe Halloween, because yes. um, we won't see you until next week. Nope. Halloween's over. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>